All right, so in this video, we're going to learn how to derive the law of cosines. So this is something you're going to do in trigonometry when you get into the section on solving oblique triangles. This is going to be covered right after the law of sines. So specifically, this is used with the side angle side and then the side 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 cases. All right, before we actually derive anything, I want to make sure that the notation that's involved is going to be clear for you. Let me go back up for a moment. You'll notice that with the law of cosines, you get three different formulas and you're just going to use the formula that you need based on the situation you're given. But you'll have a capital A, a capital B, and a capital C, again, depending on the formula you're working with. And then you're always going to have a lowercase a, a lowercase b, and a lowercase c. So let me come down and make sure that this is something you understand because it's very important to go along with this tutorial here. Essentially, if you have an uppercase letter in your formula, that's for an angle measure. And then if you have a lowercase letter, that's for a side length. But these guys are paired up. So in other words, if I see an uppercase A in the formula, that's going to be the measure of this angle A. Then if I see a lowercase A in the formula, that's going to be the length of this side right here that is opposite of this angle A. Then similarly, if I looked at an uppercase B in the formula, that's the measure of this angle right here. And then the lowercase B, again, that's going to be the length of this side right here that is opposite of this angle B. Then lastly, if I saw an uppercase C in the formula, that's the measure of this angle C. And then the lowercase C, that's the length of this side right here, which is opposite of this angle C. So this is something you definitely need to know, again, to follow along with the tutorial. Now, specifically, we're going to be deriving this guy right here. So B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of B. Coming back down, the way we're going to do that, and I'll explain this in more detail in a moment, we're going to end up using the distance formula from algebra to find the distance from this point to this point right here. And we're going to plug in and manipulate things to get that formula. All right, so in order to derive our law of cosines formula, we're going to take an oblique triangle ABC and we're going to place it on the coordinate plane to where the vertex B is at the origin. So notice the point is labeled as 0, 0, right there. So again, to indicate that we're at the origin, we're also going to have this point right here, which is labeled as A, 0. So the X coordinate of A, and specifically that's a lowercase a, that's coming from this right here. Remember, this is the length of this side right here. So this side BC, which is on the positive X axis. So this X coordinate right here is zero. This X coordinate is going to be A because this is A right here. Then this right here, this Y coordinate is going to be zero because we're on the X axis. Now this point right here is the one that causes the most trouble and specifically this being labeled as X right here. A lot of people make the mistake and try to put negative X right there because you're in the second quadrant. That is wrong. You don't want to do that. Let me go down and let me just show you this real quick, just in case anybody gets lost. So this X comma Y is some point on the terminal side here. This X right here will be negative because we're in quadrant two. And again, this is a directed distance. And this Y right here would be positive because we're in quadrant two. So specifically, let's say we use this example right here and the point on the terminal side is negative four comma four. Well, what's the X value there? It's negative four. So in this case, we can say that X is equal to negative four meaning I would replace an X I had in a formula with negative four. Then the Y value here is positive four. So I would replace the Y value in my formula with positive four. So that's very important because a lot of people try to put negative X comma Y. If you use that, that's going to flip that over here and you're gonna be talking about this point right here, which is four comma four, and that is not on the terminal side. So that would be incorrect. So make sure you understand the notation. We're using X comma Y. So coming back, again, our goal to set up the law of cosines formula is to use the distance formula to get things started to find the distance between those two points right there. And then we're just going to manipulate things. But we have to make a little change. We're not going to use X comma Y. We're going to use C times cosine of B and then comma C times the sine of B. So this is going to be your X value. This is going to be your Y value. So where does that come from? So just going back to the basics, the cosine of this angle B is going to be X over C. So X over C. Then the sine of that angle B is going to be Y over C. So Y over C. So now you're just going to solve this one for X by multiplying both sides by C. And so this is going to cancel and you're going to get that X is equal to C times the cosine of B. Then similarly for this one, you'd multiply both sides by C. So you could solve for Y. So this would cancel and you're going to get that Y is equal to C times the sine of B. So in the place of X, we're plugging in C times the cosine of B, so that's going in right there. And then in the place of Y, we're plugging in C times the sine of B, so that's going in right there. So now what we wanna do is just plug into the distance formula. This right here, you could call that point two. This right here, you can call that point one. 
So let's just say that this is going to be for x sub one and then y sub one, and then this right here, let's say that's going to be for x sub two comma y sub two. And again, normally we call this d for distance, but let's call it b because we're using that lowercase b for the length of this side right here. So let's come down and we would just plug into the formula. Again, this D right here is gonna get replaced with this B right here. And essentially we said that your X sub two is C times the cosine of B. So this right here is getting plugged in for X sub two right there. So C times the cosine of B. Then your X sub one is going to be A. So this right here is getting plugged in right there. So that's why this goes right there. Then your Y sub two is going to be C times the sine of B. That's going right there. So here's your C times the sine of B. And then your Y sub one is zero. So that's getting plugged in right there. So there's your zero. Okay, at this point, we're just going to manipulate things to get what we saw earlier. Let me slide down a little bit. So I'm just going to start by squaring both sides. And you would get B squared is equal to. So when you square this, you're going to cancel the square root. So you're gonna have the quantity C times the cosine of B minus A squared, and then plus, this minus zero, you can just get rid of that. So this is just C times the sine of B, and this is squared. You have to be very, very careful with the steps from this point because it's very easy to make a mistake. So what we're going to do is we're actually just gonna write B squared first, and this equals, for this one, you're just gonna use your formula. So remember, if you have something like X minus Y quantity squared, this is X squared minus two times X times Y plus y squared. So just follow the formula. You're gonna have this first guy squared. Let me wrap this in parentheses. I'm gonna deal with simplifying in a moment. So C times the cosine of B squared, and then minus two times this guy times this guy. So two times C times A times the cosine of B, and then plus the last guy here, which is A squared. Then I need to simplify this. Remember how this works. So this exponent right here, let's say you had something like x, y, and it was squared like that. Well, this applies to each factor. So this is equal to x squared times y squared. So here, this would be, let's put c squared times cosine squared b. And let's erase this, and then we'll put this up here like that. And let me scooch this down a little bit. And then similarly, you have this guy that's going to apply to this one and this one, so both factors. So let's go plus c squared times sine squared B. Let me fix that real quick. When we look at this, what you're going to end up doing is saying that you want B squared is equal to, let me go back up for a moment. If you're trying to derive this on your own, just grab the formula and just look at it and say, what can I do to match things? Well, the first thing is I have this A squared right here that matches this A squared right here. So I can legally just move this out in front. So this is A squared. And then the next thing, you have this plus C squared. Well, I don't see a plus C squared. I see C squared times cosine squared B and then you have this plus c squared times sine squared b. Well, one thing is that you have a c squared that's common. So let me actually just put plus c squared times cosine squared b, and then plus c squared times sine squared b. And hopefully you can think about how you can get it to this, but we'll do that in a moment. And then you have this minus 2ac times cosine of b. So this right here is just gonna match up with this right here. So let's write minus 2ac times the cosine of b. And hopefully you thought about it for a moment and you can see that, well, the c squared can be factored out. So this right here and this right here, you can just factor that out. So this is b squared is equal to, so a squared plus, go ahead and pull that out in front of some parentheses. So C squared times the quantity, what's left? You have cosine squared B plus sine squared B. And then this would be minus two AC times the cosine of B. Okay, let me move this down here. We are thinking about this inside the parentheses. And you might say, well, this doesn't match this, but it does. Because remember we have a Pythagorean identity. So it's sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. Well, this is cosine squared B plus sine squared B is equal to one. So essentially you can replace this with one and you can say this is B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared times one and then minus two AC times the cosine of B. And basically C squared times one is just C squared. So we'll finish up by saying that this is B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared, and then minus two AC times the cosine of B. And again, we have a perfect match from this guy to this guy, so we're done.